ಕುಂಜ ವಿಹಾರಿ ಜಯರ ರಾಧ ಮಾಧವ ಕುಂಜ ವಿಹಾರಿ ಗೋಪಿ ಜನ ವಲ್ಲಭ ಗಿರಿವರದಾರಿ ಗೋಪಿ ಜನ ವಲ್ಲಭ ಗಿರಿವರದಾರಿ ಯಶೋದಾನಂದನ ಗಜ ಜನ ರಂಜನ ಯಶೋದಾನಂದನ ಬ್ರಜ ಜನ ರಂಜನ ಯಮುನ ತೀರಾವನಚಾರಿ ರಾಮುನ ತೀರಾವನಚಾರಿ ರಾಧ ಮಾಧವ ಕುಂಜ ಬಿಹಾರಿ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಹರೆ ಕೃಷ್ಣ 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 ಹರೆ 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 ರಾಮ ಹರೆ ರಾಮ 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 ಹರೆ ಹರೆ ಶ್ರೀ ಶ್ರೀ ರಾಧ ಮದನ್ ಮೋಹನ್ ಕಿ ಶ್ರೀ ಶ್ರೀ ಜಗನ್ನಾಥ್ ಬಲದೇವ್ ಸುಭದ್ರ ಮಹಾರಾಣಿ ಕಿ ಶ್ರೀ ಶ್ರೀ ಗೌರ್ ನಿತಾಯ್ ಕಿ ಶ್ರೀಲ ಪ್ರಭುಪಾದ್ ಕಿ ಸಮಾವೇತ ಗೌರ ಭಕ್ತ ವೃಂದ ಕಿ ಗ್ರಂಥರಾಜ್ ಶ್ರೀಮದ್ ಭಾಗವತಂ ಕಿ ನಿತಾಯ್ ಗೌರ ಪ್ರೇಮಾನಂದೇ ಓಂ ಅಜ್ಞಾನತಿರಂಧಸ್ ಜ್ಞಾನಾಂಜನ ಶಲಾಕಯ ಚಕ್ಷುವನ್ಮಯಿಳಿತ ಯೇನ ತಸ್ಮೈ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರವೇ ನಮಃ ಶ್ರೀಚೈತನ್ಯ ಮನೋಭೀಷ್ಟ ಸ್ಥಾಪಿತ ಯೇನ ಭೂತಲೆ ಸ್ವಯಂ ರೂಪ ಕದಾ ಮಹ್ಯಂ ದಾತಿ ಸ್ವಪದಾಂತಿಕ ವಂದೇಹಂ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರೋ ಶ್ರೀಯುತ ಪದ ಕಮಲ ಶ್ರೀ ಗುರೂನ್ ವೈಷ್ಣವಾಂಶ ಶ್ರೀರೂಪಂ ಸಾಗ್ರಜಾತ ಸಹ ಗಣ ರಘುನಾಥನ್ವಿತ ತಂ ಸಜೀವ ಸಾಧ್ವೈತ ಸಾವದೂತ ಪರಿಜನಾ ಸಹಿತ ಕೃಷ್ಣ ಚೈತನ್ಯ ದೇವ 
श्रीराधा कृष्ण पादान सहगण ललिता श्री विशाखान्विता नमा ओं विष्णुपादा कृष्ण पृष्ठा भूतले श्रीमते भक्ति वेदास्वामी नामिने नमस्ते सारस्वते देवे गौरवाणी प्रचारिणे निर्विशेष शून्यवादी पाश्चातिणे वाचाकलतरुभ्य कृपा सिंधुभ्य पति पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम जय श्री कृष्ण चैतन्य प्रभु निनंद श्री अद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासादिगौर भक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय ओम नमो भगवते वासुदेवाय नारायण नमस्कृत नरम चरोत्तम देवी सरस्वती व्यास तथो जय मुदीर ये नष्ट प्राएद्रेशु नि भागवत सेवया भगवतुतम श्लोक भक्तिर्भवती नैष्ठी कृष्णा वासुदेवाय देवकी नंदनाय च नंद गोपकुमराय गोविंदय नमो नम वेलकम आल ऑफ यू फॉर द श्रीमद भागवतम क्लास दिस मॉर्निंग एट द लोटस पीट ऑफ श्री श्री राधा मदन मोहन आई शो इज अवर्स ना दिस अवर्स इज इट नॉट दिस वन और द वर्स नंबर Four twenty eight twenty nine. Correct. So this this morning we are reading from the Shrimad Bhagavatam, from the fourth canto, twenty eight chapter. Puranjana becomes a woman in the next life. And we are reading the twenty-ninth verse. Upaye me virya pana virya pana vaidhi malayadvaja yudhi nirjitya rajanyan pandya parapuran jaya. उपये मे वीर्यपण वैदर्भी मलयध्वज युधि पांड्य परपुरंजय उपये मे वीर्यपण वैदर्भी मलयध्वज युधि निर्जित्यजन्यान पांड्य परपुरंजय वीरपण हिमलयध्वज युधि निर्जित्यजन्यान पांड्य परपुरंजय उपये मे वीर्यपण वैदर्भी मलयध्वज 
युधि निर्जित्यराजन्यान पांड्य पर पुरंजय उपये मे वीर्यपण वैदर्भिमलयद युधि निर्जित्यराजन्यान पांड्य पर मत जिस उपये मे वीर्यपण वैदर्भिमलयद्वज युधि निर्जित्यराजन्यान पांड्य पर पुरंजय उपये मे मैरी वीर ऑफ वैलर और प्रवेश प्रणाम द प्राइज वैदर भीम डॉटर ऑफ वैदर डॉटर ऑफ विदर्भा मलयध्वज मलयध्वज युधि इन द फाइट निर्जित आफ्टर कॉन्क्वरिंग राजन्यान अदर प्रिंसेस पांड्य बेस्ट ऑफ द लर्न और बॉर्न इन द कंट्री नोन एज पांडु पर ट्रांसनेटल पुरम सिटी जय कॉन्क्वर ट्रांसलेशन परपोर्ट बाई डिवाइन ग्रेस एसी भक्ति प्रधान स्वामी श्री प्रभुपाल के इट वॉज फिक्स दैट वाइदर बी डॉटर ऑफ किंग विदर्भा वॉज टू बी मैरिड टू ए वेरी पॉफुल मैन मलय ध्वज एंड इनहेबिटेंट ऑफ द पॉन्ट टू कंट्री आफ्टर कॉन्क्वरिंग अदर प्रिंसेस ही मैरिड द डॉटर ऑफ किंग किंग विदर्भा परपोर्ट इट इज कस्टमरी अमंग क्षत्रियाज फॉर अ प्रिंसेस टू बी ऑफर्ड अंडर सर्टन कंडीशन फॉर इंस्टेंस Draupadi was offered in marriage to one who could pierce a fish with an arrow simply by seeing the reflection of that fish. Krishna married one of his queens after conquering seven strong bulls. Isn't it? Uh, uh, what is the name of that king? Nagnajiti. Yeah, correct. The Vedic system is for a daughter of a king to be offered under certain conditions. Why there be the daughter of Vidarbha? was offered to a great devotee and powerful king since king maladuja was both a powerful king and a great devotee he he fulfilled all the requirements <clears throat> the name maladuja signifies a great devotee who stands as firm as malaya hill and through his propaganda makes other devotees similarly as firm such a mahabhagavata can prevail over the opinions of all others a strong devotee makes propaganda against all other spiritual conceptions namely jnana karma and yoga with his devotional flag unfurled he always stands fast to conquer other conceptions of transcendental realization whenever there is an argument between a devotee and a non devotee the pure strong devotee comes out victorious the word pandya comes from the word panda meaning knowledge unless one is highly learned he cannot conquer non devotional conceptions the word para means transcendental and pura means city the para pura is vaikuntha the kingdom of god and the word jaya refers to one who can conquer this means that a pure devotee who is strong in devotional service and who has conquered all non devotional conceptions can also conquer the kingdom of god in other words one can conquer the kingdom of god by kuntha only by rendering devotional service the supreme personality of god head is called ajita meaning that no one can conquer him but a devotee by strong devotional service and sincere attachment to the supreme personality of god head can easily conquer him lord krishna is fear personified for everyone but he voluntarily agreed to fear the stick of mother yashoda krishna god cannot be conquered by anyone but his devotee such a devotee kindly married the daughter of king vidarbha so how malayadvaja is a great soul will be revealed in the later section Uh, he was a pure devotee malayadvaja mm -hmm. 
Maladvaja and Vaidarbi, in their Vanaprastha stage, they go to the forest hmm, and uh, they practice devotional service. Vaidarbi is assisting him and Maladvaja is practicing devotional service very intensely, seriously. Hmm. And as Prabhupada says, Dvaja means flag. Malaya means Malaya hills. Huh? Like Malaya hills is very strong mountain. Huh? Like that he was very strong in devotional service. Hmm? And the uh, flag represents he conquered all the lower conceptions of so-called spirituality. Hmm? Hmm. So, Prabhupada explains this, that by strong devotional service, the Lord is attracted. Strong devotional service subordinates the Lord. Huh? So, what is the example he gives? Like Yashoda is able to catch Krishna and bind him. No? Or Arjuna is able to have Krishna as part of the Sarati, driving his chariot. No? Lord becomes subordinate to devotees, strong devotional service, he says. Mm. And uh, for the Dvaja, for the Janda, or the um, flag, he says, a devotee should be able to boldly preach and uh, conquer all the lower conceptions of karma, jnana, yoga and everything. And establish Bhakti Yoga as the ultimate. Huh? So, when we read this, who comes to our mind immediately? Srila Prabhupada and Srila Bhaksan Thakur. Isn't it? So, these people are known for, these personalities are known for uh, driving out all the misconceptions. Like we say, Nirvishesha, Shunyavadi, Paschata Desha Tarane. Hmm? In the same manner, what is Srila Bhaksan Thakur's Pranati Mantra? Nama Om Vishnu Padaya, Krishna Prashtaya Bhutale, Srimate Bhakti Siddhanta, Saraswati Tinamine, Sri Varshavana Vi Devi, Daitaya Kribabdaya, Krishna Sambandha Vijnana, Dayane Prabhave Namaha, Madhuryojwala Premadhya, Sri Rupanuga Bhakti Da, Sri Gaura Karuna Shakti, Vigrahaya Namostute, Namaste Gauravani, Sri Murtaye Dinatarine, Rupanuga Viruddha, Apasiddhanta Dvanta Harine, that is Dvaja. Hmm? So, Panuga Viruddha, if somebody is presenting some false philosophical conceptions that you know you are God, I am God, everybody is God, this is one false conception. Hmm? Or somebody says you can directly approach God, uh, you don't have to have, go through a Guru, that is Sahajyaism. Hmm? Sahajyas reject Guru and try to go to Krishna directly. And Mayavadis make Guru into God. Both are false conceptions. We need Guru also and God also, both. Like we worship Gaur and Nitai. Gaur is God, Nitai is Adi Guru. We worship the Guru and Krishna together. So, Yascha Deve Para Bhaktir Yata Deve Tata Gurau Tasyaite Kathita Hyarta Prakashante Mahatmanaha when a disciple worships Guru and Krishna together, uh, understanding Guru should be given respect as good as Krishna, but Guru is not Krishna. At the same time, he deserves to be respected like Krishna because he gifts us Krishna. Uh, therefore, he should be respected like that. There is one organization in these days, very popular for making big, big temples all across the globe. Huh? And uh, they are very moneyed people also. They have followers who are very wealthy. They make stone temples, very attractive. And they also have some connection to one of the Vaishnava Sampradayas. Huh? But eventually, although their um, original founder clearly writes, the ultimate goal of life is to worship Sri Sri Radha and Krishna, and I bow down my head at their lotus feet. That's the first verse he writes in the Shiksha Patris. Huh? He writes. But then eventually, down the line, uh, they have made, you know, when you go to the temple hall, on one side you find uh, Shiva and Parvati on that side, and this side you find Radha and Krishna. But in the altar mainly they have kept only the Gurus. Mm -hmm. So they are making Gurus the object of worship. Mm -hmm. And uh, Radha, Krishna and uh, Lord Shiva, Parvati, they all have gone to the side. Uh, so that is a, that's a kind of deviation. Uh, that's a kind of deviation, very dangerous deviation it is. Because there is a, a flaw, flaw in the Siddhanta. Yes, it is true, Guru should be respected like God, but you can't make Guru bigger than God. Huh? Or you can't substitute Guru, substitute God with Guru. Huh? So these kind of apasiddhantas, uh, Bhaksan Thakur, you know, completely smashed and drove out. Huh? 
So these are not the only ones. There are many. If you want to know more Apasiddhanta, you can go to the seventh canto. There are five types of dharmas explained. Huh? Beginning with, uh, uh, you know, Vidharma, huh? Paradharma, uh, Abhasa Dharma, and uh, Upadharma, Chala Dharma. Five types, he says. Like, uh, uh, Vidharma means, you know, pretending to be religious, but breaking the regulative principles. Like, there are even some organizations where somebody may wear a dress of a sannyasi, but they may still eat meat. Huh? They do not know that eat meat eating is wrong. Huh? Either they don't know or they know it, they are unable to control it. Huh? There are also certain, if you go to Kumamela, you see some sadhus uh, smoking BD also. Huh? So this is Vidharma. Vidharma means you wear attire of a, you know, a religious person, but then we break the religious principles, Vidharma. And Paradharma means you do the Dharma that is meant for someone else. Paradharma Bhayabaha, Krishna says in Gita. Like for example, uh, Brahmana should do Brahmana work. Kshatriya should do Kshatriya work. Vaishya should do Vaishya work. If somebody is trying to, like Ekalaveva is trying to uh, become a Kshatriya, although uh, he, his qualities were such that uh, if he would adopt the role of a Kshatriya, he would cause great damage in society. That was foreseen by Dronacharya, who refused to accept him as a disciple. No? But then he insisted keeping a portrait of him and learning the archery. And later on, he pinned the mouth of a dog with five arrows. The poor creature was screaming when Arjuna detected that and brought it to Dronacharya and said, someone has clipped the mouth of a dog. It is unable to bark. Huh? So he said, Dronacharya said, this must be the act of a fool. It is inappropriate action. You are not supposed to kill a dog or a cat with your arrows. Uh, you, you should know when to use and where to use. So then afterwards he said it must be work of Ekalavya. He called him and then he was called and then he took his thumb away so that he can't misuse his uh, you know, archery talent. Huh? This is not known to so many people. Many people think Ekalavya gave his thumb to Guru, such a great Guru Bhakta. <laughs> they think like that in India. Bhaksan Thakur has given a correct explanation that Ekalavya actually became whimsical, independent-minded and acted against the order of Guru by making a portrait of Guru to increase his own fame and reputation. Huh? And then using that he wanted to become more skilled and then become popular in the world. Sometimes a, a disciple may use the fame of Guru to increase one's own popularity. Mm -hmm. uh, so, he was one similar to that. So, therefore, he was asked to give away the thumb. Huh? Like that. It is Paradharma he was doing. Huh? So, one should give up Vidharma. One should give up Paradharma. One should give up Abhasa Dharma. Abhasa Dharma is actually like Bhakti Abhas. He is Sahajayadam. Huh? Sahajayadam means, you know, somebody is chanting and singing and crying tears. You know, shaking their body, rolling on the ground. Simply to show to others, I am a great devotee. Everybody should touch my feet. So these type of people are also there. Prabhupada never gave any respect to such pretenders. It's called Abhasa Dharma. Abhasa Dharma means it looks like great bhakti, but there is no bhakti there. It's a, simply a display of, you know, uh, you know, your pretend, pretensive, uh, yeah, display of a pretense. It's actually not a true bhakti at all. So, and these people later on, they are found to be indulging in illicit connections and doing all nonsensical activities. So, therefore, uh, such Sahajaism is condemned as Abhasa Dharma, which looks like they pretend to be great devotees. What is that verse? Shruti Smriti Puram Shruti Pancharatriki Vidim Vina Aikantika Hare Bhaktir Utpata Ayaiva Kalpate if somebody is pretending to do bhakti, but they don't study you know, Shruti, Smriti, Puran, based on that, because Sahaja has condemned Jiva Goswami, saying that, why is he becoming a jnani? Huh? What is the need? You know, for bhakti, you don't need to become a great scholar. You just, you know, cry tears, roll on the ground, Radhe Radhe, you chant, that's all. Huh? You do bhakti. But Jiva Goswami is a pure, pure devotee. Uh, he has uh, summarized all the Vedic literature in very nice uh, sandarbhas and everything for what? Uh, 
in order to establish bhakti as the ultimate goal of life. Huh? So, without enlightenment, one should not just make a pretense of bhakti. Huh? So, Abhasa Dharma is condemned. Uh, similarly, there is Chala Dharma. Chala Dharma means like impersonless. Huh? Impersonless, they um, pretend to be like devotees. They also worship Murti. But later they will drop the Murti in water. You have seen in Durga Puja time, they will worship Durga for 10 days and then what they will do? They throw it in water. And Ganesh at the time, they will worship Ganesh for some one week and they will put him in water. Have you ever seen in Iskhan anywhere people worship Krishna, Radha Krishna and put them in water? Whole life they will worship and after they pass away, then other devotees will continue to worship. In Vaishnava philosophy, the worship of the Lord, chanting of the holy name, performance of bhakti is everlasting, eternal. It's imperishable bhakti yoga. That is true bhakti. We are doing bhakti so that in a spiritual world we will again continue to do bhakti. Not that now we do bhakti. And after some time we become very powerful, we become liberated, then throw God into the water. Hmm. We will not do that in bhakti. So therefore, Chala Dharma means uh, uh, putting the Vesh Bush of a bhakta, but you know, having some other goal in mind. Once when I went to Bengal, I saw one very elderly person along with his wife, they were in a Vanaprasa stage, like 70, 75 years old. Huh? And he was wearing a tilak, Urdha Pundra tilak. And I saw he's a Vaishnava. So he was actually parent of one devotee. Mm -hmm. So that devotee told me that they are going to move to our ashram there. They're going to join full time. Now they are 70 years now. They want to leave home and go and stay in the ashram. I said, that's wonderful. So seeing his Urdha Punda Tilak, I said, I, you look like a Gaudiya Vaishnava. Huh? You know, uh, who is your guru and which line you come from? You know, maybe I thought, maybe he may be Nithyananda Vamsha, Advaita Vamsha, something he may be coming in this public land. So he said, no, 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 no. He said, I belong to, and then he told some Ayavadi Mat name. And he said, but how do you wear this tilak? He said, our, our path is Chaitanya Pat Shankara Mat. He said, huh? Chaitanya Pat means, we like the path of Chaitanya chanting, dancing and calling the holy name. But our goal is ultimately to merge in God. Huh? So this is Chala Dharma, <laughs> cheating Dharma. Just like, you know, you use a ladder to climb up stairs and then you kick away the ladder. <laughs> or you use a spoon to stir and then you throw away the spoon. Similarly, use murti or use the mantra for getting moksha and after you get moksha, you give it up. That is Chala Dharma. A devotee can never give up the Lord's lotus feet. Huh? It's a uh, pratyakshavagamam dharmyam susukam kartum. The word avyayam means what? Bhakti is eternal. Bhakti is imperishable. Bhakti never stops any time. Huh? It, it is apratyata, uninterrupted. So anybody who interrupts their bhakti and thinks, now I am liberated, that is actually Chala Dharma. Huh? How many I told you? Uh, for Vidharma, uh, Paradharma, uh, one, is, one more is called Upadharma. Huh? So Vidharma, uh, Abhasa Dharma, Chala Dharma, and then I told you, Paradharma I told you. The fifth one is Upadharma. Upadharma means, like for example, there may be one limb of religion, like say Ahimsa for example. But that's not the ultimate religion. There may be a branch of a tree, but branch of a tree is not the root of the tree. It branches a branch only. Like Ahimsa is one of the branches of the religious principles. But if you see Bauddha Dharma, they have made Ahimsa the Paramo Dharma. And that is called Upadharma. Mm -hmm. They are making uh, a small shaka, one branch of uh, dharma into ultimate. In Iskhan, you will see, within uh, six months, one year, people follow Ahimsa very easily. Huh? They give up meat eating and everything. It's not that that's ultimate. Mm -hmm. Ultimate is love of God. Mm -hmm. Awakening love for God, that's ultimate. So, awakening love for God is like the root of all religion. Huh? And all other sub-religions are like branches uh, sprouting from that. We may have, you know, Worshipping mother, worshipping father, worshipping Atithi, uh, Matru Deva Baba, Pitru Deva Baba, Atithi Deva Baba. And there is Samaj Dharma, there is Tri Dharma, there is Kola Dharma, different Dharma, they are all branches. But the root of all the religions originally is love of God. Huh? So, 
ವೇದ ಪ್ರಣಿಹಿತ ಧರ್ಮ ಅಧರ್ಮಸ್ತತ್ಪರ್ಯ ವೇದೋ ನಾರಾಯಣ ಸಾಕ್ಷಾತ್ ಸ್ವಯಂ ಭೂರಿತಿ ಶುಶ್ರುಮ ಐದರ್ ಯಮದುತಾಸ್ ಟೋಲ್ ದ ವಿಷ್ಣು ದುತಾಸ್ ದಟ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ಧರ್ಮ ವಾಟ್ ಇಸ್ ವಾಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಸೆಟ್ ಇನ್ ದ ವೇದಾಸ್ ಸೊ ದೇ ನ್ಯೂ ದ ವೈದಿಕ್ ಧರ್ಮ ಬಟ್ ದೇ ಡೆಂಟ್ ನೋ ದ ಭಾಗವತ ಧರ್ಮ ಅಂತ ಭಾಗವತ ಧರ್ಮ ವಾಸ್ ಸ್ಟಾರ್ಟ್ ಬೈ ಹೋಮ್ ಟು ದಮ್ ಹಾ ಯಾಕ ಯಮರಾಜ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಸ್ಪೋಕ್ ಬಟ್ ಪ್ರಯರ್ ಟು ಗೋಯಿಂಗ್ ಟು ಯಮರಾಜ್ ಇವನ್ ವಿಷ್ಣು ವಿಷ್ಣು ದೂತ ಸ್ಪೋಕ್ ದ ಗ್ಲೋರಿ ಆಫ್ ದ ಹೋಲಿ ನೇಮ್ ಆಲ್ಸೋ ಟಾಟ್ ಬಟ್ ಭಾಗವತ್ ಧರ್ಮ ವಾಸ್ ಮೋರ್ ಎಲಾಬ್ರೇಟ್ಲಿ ಸ್ಪೋಕನ್ ಬೈ ಯಮರಾಜ್ ಹಿ ಟೋಲ್ ದಮ್ ಅಬೌಟ್ ಟ್ವೆಲ್ ಮಹಾಜನ್ಸ್ ಐ ಟೋಲ್ ದಮ್ ದಟ್ ಪರೋ ದಟ್ ಅಲ್ಟಿಮೇಟ್ ಧರ್ಮ ಪರೋ ಧರ್ಮ ದರ್ ಇಸ್ ನಥಿಂಗ್ ಬಿಯಾಂಡ್ ದಟ್ ಲವ್ ಆಫ್ ಗಾಡ್ ಇಸ್ ಅಲ್ಟಿಮೇಟ್ ಇಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಪಂಚಮ ಪುರುಷಾರ್ಥ ಬಿಯಾಂಡ್ ದ ಫೋರ್ ಪುರುಷಾರ್ಥಸ್ ಆಫ್ ಧರ್ಮಾರ್ಥ ಕಾಮ ಮೋಕ್ಷ ಸೊ ಇನ್ ದಿಸ್ ವೇ ಮಲಯ ಧ್ವಜ ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ಸ್ ಫಾರ್ ದ ಪರೋ ಧರ್ಮ ಪ್ರಾಕ್ಟಿಷನರ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಪರೋ ಧರ್ಮ ಪ್ರೀಚರ್ ಹಿ ಲಿವ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಹಿ ಟೀಚರ್ಸ್ ಇಟ್ ಸೊ ದಟ್ ಇಸ್ ಧ್ವಜ ಅಂಡ್ ಹಿ ಸ್ಮ್ಯಾಶಸ್ ಆಲ್ ದ ಲೋಯರ್ ಕನ್ಸೆಪ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ಅಂಡ್ ಡ್ರೈವ್ ದ ಮವೇ ಅದರ್ ಕನ್ಸೆಪ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಸಬಾರ್ಡಿನೇಟ್ ಕನ್ಸೆಪ್ಷನ್ಸ್ ದೇ ಡೋಂಟ್ ಹ್ಯಾವ್ ಎನಿ ಸ್ಟ್ಯಾಂಡ್ ಇನ್ ಫ್ರಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದಿಸ್ ಪರೋ ಧರ್ಮ ಪರೋ ಧರ್ಮ ಇಸ್ ಲೈಕ್ ದ ಸನ್ ಶೈನಿಂಗ್ ಇನ್ ದ ಸ್ಕೈ ಆಲ್ ಅದರ್ ಧರ್ಮಸ್ ಆರ್ ಲೈಕ್ ಸ್ಮಾಲ್ ಲ್ಯಾಂಪ್ಸ್ ಆರ್ ಕ್ಯಾಂಡಲ್ಸ್ ಇನ್ ಫ್ರಂಟ್ ಆಫ್ ದಟ್ like sometimes uh, your sadhu is teaching that you should uh, you know do service to people social service you know you should build a hospital or you should build an anakshetra or you should respect your mother and father or you should uh, respect your nation and things like that or you should uh, take care of cows all this is correct mm-hmm. but they are all subordinate dharma mm-hmm. but the ultimate dharma is to love the source of everything janma adhyasya yataha that is krishna that is ultimate dharma so in this way uh, he was a strong devotee at the same time he conquered all the lower philosophies and established the highest philosophy of krishna consciousness so in that connection i want to show something regarding shila bhaksan sar thakur you can see here i'll, I'll make it a little bigger all right Coming? Is it bright enough? You can increase the brightness. See, the purpose of uh, you know, our temples, Shira Pakistan is talking about what he says, you see here. One of you ready to have the mic with you? The Mathas, temples were not established to favor ordinary people, but to help your devotees advance in spiritual life. we serve lord gavaranga simply by performing shri krishna sankirtana the bhagavatam verse yajna sankirtana prai yajanti hi su medasaha supports this idea the example said by shri krishna's gaura pastimes is the only auspicious way to perfection for the jivans so he is saying our temples were not established to favor ordinary people he is saying who are the ordinary people ordinary people who are generally uh religious people they come to temple just bow down to god to seek some favors from god huh? oh god please give me this give me that that's one type of people there are some other people who do business with god if you give me 5 lakh i'll give you 1 lakh they do business with the deities and more or most of the people come to temple uh, you know ring a bell put a coin and bow down and go it's a regular ritual for them there are people who go on monday to one temple wednesday to another temple friday to another temple in india it's very common sight huh? so th- this is ordinary worship huh? our temples are not there for that purpose is saying see think about it huh? iskon is establishing very very many many big temples uh, what are the type of people we are attracting is very important huh? he is saying our temples are not established for favoring ordinary people who do not know anything about the deity standing there who do not know anything about the shastra they are not practicing serious devotional service they just come as a ritual just like people go to kumbha mela once in a year to get liberated huh? i mean whenever it happens so people who go like that and uh, that is not the type of people our uh, matta should attract is saying we should serve lord gauranga by performing sri krishna sankirtan he is saying i uh, read for the mathas the mathas have not been established to please bhogis or tagis enjoyers or renunciates yeah, what good. happens with enjoyers enjoyers may stay in the matha eat well and sleep well 
and increase their comforts and facilities. Uh, like when uh, Srila Bhaktisam says Thakur, so one of the disciples, he spent his entire life savings in building one big matha called Bag Bazar Mat. Uh, and he exhausted the money so much that he had not a single penny in the bank. And then he went to spiritual master and offered obeisance and said, Maharaj, I have nothing else. And his guru, Bhagavan Sutaku, told him, you also come and live in the Mata. Huh? So he also lived in the Mata only. Huh? Till his last days, he lived also there. But the Mata, you go and see even today, it's very beautifully built. Huh? With nice marble and everything, huge size. Prior to that, Bhagavan Sutaku and his disciples, they were living in a small Mata, which would uh, not be able to provide facility for their comfortable stay. Huh? It was a very congested place, very small Mata. After that, they left that small place and came to this big place. And Sri Bhaktan Thakur saw that the disciples had a tussle. Somebody wanted a bigger office. He said, you take the small office, I'll take a bigger office. I'll take a bigger room. I want Ganga facing room. You know, I will take this room, I'll take that room. So he saw that they are quarreling for better comforts and better facilities and amenities. Just eating, eating food and sleeping and not going out. He said, this is a great curse. There is fire in the mud, he said. Why? Because the purpose for which Matta is established is not understood. It is not for the bogies, he says. Huh? Uh, so, then you may ask, then what are they supposed to do? Bhaksana huh? Thakur used to print books and fill up the Matta with so many books, there will be no place to sleep. And disciples would complain, where will we sleep? There is no place. He would say, sell the books and make a place to sleep. Huh? So they can sleep that day. Next day again, you'll print and bring more books. So if you see the Gaudiya Mat symbol, the circle, one side you will find there is Aarti lamp and bell. Huh? Another side you will see a Murdangam and printing press. Huh? So the Aarti and the bell represents Pancharatri Givedi, which is deity worship. Huh? That is Aarti and the bell. And the other one, the Murdanga and the printing press talks Bhagavat Vidhi. Huh? That means uh, studying the Srimad Bhagavatam by Shravanam and Kirtanam, huh? and propagating the same message loudly huh? to the whole world, and performing Krishna Sankirtan. Huh? That is actually Bhagavata Vidhi. So he said, both are important for us. It's like, uh, uh, both are limbs of devotion service, but out of the two, Bhagavata Vidhi is more important, he said. Uh, hearing and chanting, and also going out and propagating the holy name. Hmm? That is the purpose of the Matha. Hmm? Matha is like a battalion where the soldiers stay, get trained to go out and perform the war against Maya. And Prabhupada used to say, take these books and drop these books in the lap of conditioned souls who will wake up by getting these books, he used to say. Like when a helicopter drops the bomb, the enemies are destroyed. Similarly, Maya's influence should be destroyed and Krishna's influence should be increased in this world. That is the purpose of the Mata. Therefore, Mata should be small, activity should be big. Uh, not that Matha is very big, then there are no activities, people are eating and sleeping. Uh, that is not the Matha's purpose. Uh, yeah, please go ahead. They have been established to preach pure devotion service. We receive blessings as we serve Hari by establishing Mathas. No, no, no. The purpose of the Matha is to preach pure devotion service. That should not be forgotten. Uh. Our intention is not to collect one or two rupees to benefit the Matha. We should not be eager to take help from unscrupulous people. Who are the unscrupulous people? Uh, there are people who may want to offer you a donation. Uh, and the purpose of their offering, and uh, uh, many a times people earn money by illegal means, dishonest means. Uh, and sometimes they give a donation, and but they are not ready to hear any spiritual instructions at all. Uh, they just throw money like uh, throwing for a beggar. So. Uh, taking money from such unscrupulous people is not the goal of a matter. Hmm? Because if somebody is practicing devotion service and they are giving donation, that is even more uh, powerful donation than those who are just throwing money thinking the poor guys just take the money, eat and sleep. Huh? Like that. Uh, go ahead. Rather, if we can benefit anyone by speaking the bold truth, then the matha's purpose is served. Uh, so we can run a matha in two ways. Take a suitcase, go out, raise funds, bring it back, cook nice food, offer to deities, eat and go to sleep. That's one way to run Mata. Another one is, make the Mata a place for speaking the bold truth. Present the path of Shuddha Bhakti without any hesitation 
without any fear, even at the cost of risking people misunderstanding us. Huh? We present the truth very clearly and maybe that may re reduce the donations, but one doesn't mind. Huh? And one should preach the truth very boldly, like Bhatsan Thakur did. Hmm? And then whatever comes is Krishna's grace. Uh, accept that and be satisfied uh, with that. Live a simple life, but don't keep the activity simple. Activity should be very uh, high level activity, which means book should be go printed, book should be distributed, Harinam Sankirtan should be happening, Prasad should be cooked and distributed, Pre preaching should happen like a university. Many, many people come and uh, get connected and they get uh, spiritually awakened. And they get the spiritual vision, Shastra, Chakshu, to see the world properly. And they also go to different, different places and they distribute the knowledge far and wide. Mm -hmm. That is the Mata's purpose. Mm -hmm. People will often play tricks on us. We should consider such tricks as the Lord's test. It is difficult to cross beyond insurmountable Maya unless we are greatly fortunate. Yeah, what is this trick? Not only people, even demigods play trick on us. I you know I saw one purport in the 12th canto. Purport says that sometimes the demigod sees that somebody is a brahmacharya or a sannyasi is dedicating his life or even somebody is a grihastha who is very seriously situated in devotional service. Huh? Then uh, they may send false followers and, uh, you know, and sometimes beautiful women huh, to allure them and uh, dry, you know, pull their leg. Huh? Because demigod sometimes become envious in that purport it says. Who is the demigod becomes envious? Indra. Correct, no? Huh? So they may send, but one has to pass the test by firmly sticking to pure devotional service and not fall away. No? Similarly, nowadays there are so many opportunities for the people to fall away by reading so many unwanted magazines and watching so many unwanted uh, uh, things on internet. So even a person wanting to practice pure devotional service is constantly threatened by various uh, vicious elements all around us uh, in the current day and age. So, therefore, such uh, elements may play a trick on us and also there are many people also who are opposed to the path of pure devotion service. Uh, so, he says that it is difficult, like Mayavadis and Bogis are both conditioned souls. He says, Bogis and Tyagis. Uh, uh, read further by the mercy of... By the mercy of Krishna devotees, persons who surrender to Hari can discriminate between good and bad, right and wrong. Know for certain that being drawn by the enjoying spirit Many people cannot realize the Absolute Truth. Ah. Why we are unable to realize Absolute Truth? Bhogai Shvarya Prasakthanam Taya Apakrita Chetasam Vyavasaya Atmika Buddhir Samadhauna Vidhiyate Samadhi doesn't come in Krishna because of two things, Bhoga and Aishwarya, he says. Same thing he says here. Even though one is uh, supposed to be a, like a Malaya Dvaja, one becomes a Dharma Dvaji. Huh? That is also Dvaja. What is Dharma Dvaji? Dvaji means a person holding a flag. Yeah. Dharma Dvaji means he is a pretender. What is a pretender? He may have the attire of a religious person. Like for example, Ravana was a Dharma Dvaji. He was having a big jata over his head and having Rudraksha around it, carrying a kamandalu with a long beard and long moustache. Yeah. Looked like a very great saint in the forest, but his intention was to steal Sita and take her away. Correct, no? So, Dharma Dvaji. So, that's what he is saying here that a Vaishnava will not get cheated by such uh, such display of so-called religion. Instead of being Dharma Dvaji, one should be Malaya Dvaja. Huh? Yeah. Read further. Not for our comfort. It is more intelligent to create a living Matha rather than to build a Matha for comfortable living. <laughs> you see, the Matha, there is a living Matha, there is a dead Matha. Huh? Like uh, sometimes you see when you go on the road, huh? Certain churches operate only on Sunday. Huh? Monday to Saturday there is no activity there. It's practically closed and dust covered. Huh? No activity. On Sunday it's very, very active. Huh? Sunday people come and offer donations also. But actually, a living matha means a, a temple where there is a constant Shravanam Kirtanam going on. Uh, hundreds and thousands of people, living entities, suffering souls come there, hear the Katha, hear the Kirtan, take the Darshan, take Prasad, chant the Holy Name and become purified and relish the Shuddha Bhakti. That's a living Matha. Yeah. Creating a living Matha means to attract faithful persons to surrender at the lotus feet of spiritual master. The highest welfare activity Who is to... Who are the faithful persons? 
श्रद्धावान जन हे 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 अपराध शून्य हो लो कृष्ण नाम कृष्ण माता कृष्ण पिता कृष्ण धन प्राण प्रभुर अज्ञाया बाई मागी ये भिक्षा बोलो कृष्ण बजो कृष्ण करो कृष्ण शिक्षा कृष्ण र संसार करो छाड़ी आना चा जीवे दया कृष्ण नाम सर्व धर्म जीवे दया कृष्ण नाम सर्व धर्म नागो ध्रुव नित्यानंद महाज पाती याचे नाम हट जीवर कर श्रद्धा वंदन हे श्रद्धा वंदन हे श्रद्धा वंदन हे श्रद्धा वंदन हे देर आर सोल्स हक्सेप्ट दिस फिल विच इज द कोर फिलोसफी ऑफ ऑल द स्क्रिप्चर्स वॉट इज इट कृष्णा इज अवर मदर कृष्णा इज अवर फादर कृष्णा इज अवर रिलेटिव इज अवर बेस्ट फ्रेंड इज अवर वेल्थ इज अवर एजुकेशन इज बी ऑल एंड एंड ऑल एंड देर फॉर आई शुड कॉल आउट द होली नेम्स ऑफ कृष्णा फॉरवेंटली विद सिंस डिवोशन एंड विदाउट एनी प्रिटेंस विदाउट एनी अफेंस एंड सिमिलरली वन शुड चैंड नॉट ओनली कृष्णा नेम्स वन शुड वर्शिप द डेटी ऑफ कृष्णा वन शुड स्टडी द कृष्ण कथा एंड कृष्ण उपदेश एंड थ्री मेन प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ रिलीजन वॉट आर दे नाम रुचि देवे दया वैष्णव सेवा मेकिंग दीज थ्री द फाउंडेशनल प्रिंसिपल्स ऑफ लाइफ दट इज एक्चुअली फेथफुल पर्सन हू प्रैक्टिस दैट सो वी हेव टू लुक फॉर दोस्ट विद स्पार्क हू आर बिल्डिंग टू अंडरस्टैंड दिस फिलोसफी एंड एक्सेप्ट इट and surrender their lives to it mm-hmm. yeah so creating a living matter means to attract such faithful persons to surrender at the lotus feet of spiritual master then for them krishna becomes a life and soul ha uh, go ahead the highest welfare activity is to attract living entities to serve the spiritual master's lotus feet by describing to them the spiritual master's glories and service for this we spend gallons of blood such preaching will please both guru and krishna therefore to dedicate body mind and speech to such philanthropic activities is the perfection of life yeah. people are so foolish they think philanthropic activity means just distribute food or distribute clothes distribute medicines and they say what your guruji is doing you know your guruji is just taking a bongo and just you know waiting hari krishna hari rama is chanting so we should tell the acharyas glories to them huh? we should tell them that hey what are you you don't know he is dispatching souls from this world to that world hmm? from the material world to spiritual world and this is the highest service huh? tell the glory of acharyas greatest contribution if you give food to somebody they will eat food and still be crying if you give medicine they may apply the medicine they may get cured again another disease will come huh? if you even if you do some material favor it lasts for a short while but if you help a soul to go back to god head then yadgatva nani vartante that's the greatest service then so tell the acharyas greatest contribution uh, and in this way dedicating body mind and speech to lord hari service that's the best service uh, read for that the matha surcharged with talk of krishna's glories and service is non different from vaikuntha thus living in a matha is just like living in a dham hari katha must be prominent in, in in the matha there is no use in building a matha simply to facilitate eating and sleeping matha should be built only to spread hari katha this will benefit us and others yeah 
Actually, in every place, something is prominent. You go to the uh, Chamber of Commerce, people are talking about money, uh, business. You go to a hospital, there is a lot of talks about diseases, medicines, treatment, and different type of departments where they do different tests and all that. It's prominent with that. Is it not true? Uh, anywhere you go, there is some prominent activity happening there. Similarly, temple should be activity. When people come, there should be Harinam, there should be Harikirtan. Uh, it should be vibrant in the temple. That is the main... That's, the other things are secondary. Eating, sleeping is a secondary business. That's not a main thing. It's a side business. Yeah. Uh. Devotees who are fully dedicated to their spiritual master are the living source. And we are here... Yeah, we are we are to hear from such living sources so that we too can become dedicated devotees. People devoid and bereft of service to the spiritual master are dead, even as they breathe. Do not associate with such non-devotees if you do not want to harm your spiritual progress. <laughs> so there are two types of uh, people. One are living, another one is dead. In Srimad Bhagavatam, there is a word used, living dead. Huh? Where does this come? Huh? There is a, uh, what is it? Tarava kim na jeevanti, bastra kim na shashanti, uta na kaadanti na mehanti, kim grame pashabo apare. That's one verse. There is one. Jeevan ape mruto hisai. What is that verse? Neha yat karma dharmaya na viraga yakalpate na tirtapada seva yai jeevan ape mruto hisai. That's a verse. See what it says. Neha yat karma dharmaya. You are doing, say, Brahman, Chatriya, Vaishya, Shudra karma you are doing. And that karma should lead you to dharma. What is the dharma? You have to offer the fruits to Lord. Then it becomes dharma. Otherwise, useless it is. Aneka yat karma dharmaya. And then as you keep offering fruits to Lord, you become detached, detached. It produces vairagya from the material world and attraction to the spiritual world. Na viragaya kalpate. And then as you focus on the spiritual world, then pure devotees become attractive for you. Then you start reading books like Bhagavad Gita, Bhagavatam and gradually come to chanting holy name and then purifying the heart and going back to God. So karma leads to dharma, dharma leads to, uh, you know, attraction to the acharyas and then attraction to them leads to shuddha bhakti huh? and the shuddha bhakti ultimately takes us back to God. And if it doesn't happen, you say jivan napi murtohi sahar. Then a person is called living dead, he's saying. Now, uh, we have experience in our preaching uh, in the beginning, one or two or three very powerful people come in any place you go. And they carry a lot of life in them. You can see how enthusiastic they are in chanting, dancing and studying and practicing. For them, Krishna becomes life and soul and we become very, we also become very happy. How many of you experience in the preaching some newcomer showed great enthu and then even you are surprised. Even I don't have so much enthu like that. You have seen that? Correct? You have seen that? But then eventually as the number increases, 10, 20, 30 people come, you find that some people are alive, some are dead. And the dead people always think about what is the food, what is the comfort, what facility and privileges I can get, you know. They become very selfish and they think about their own things. They don't think about the mission, they don't think about serious practice also. Then what happens, such a center becomes difficult to run. Because sometimes in college also when we do a program, we have a group of 20-30 people. Just because you have to pay the rent for a particular building, you know, then we keep more people. Hmm? Those are not serious. Then those less serious people spoil the place. You agree? No. Like we have a facility here in the top, uh, here, where students stay there. So, and they go for job from here or college from here. They go, that's a facility. Why this facility is being provided? Not that they can have a cheaper accommodation and proper food so that they can do their, you know, studies and uh, uh, company job alone. That can be done definitely. But what is the primary goal of this facility? Primary goal is they learn pure devotional service. When they are here, three, four, five years they will learn. After that when they have to go and get married outside, before marriage they have become stable devotees. Then they have the adhikar to lead a family, wife, children, family and everything. Otherwise, uh, simply staying here is no use. Even brahmacharis or boys who stay in the temple, our opportunity, this is a golden opportunity for us to purify our heart and then learn the path of pure devotion service based on Prabhupada's purports and the association of wonderful devotees like Anandamaya Prabhu and many other devotees. Huh? So, we are here for that purpose. We are all apprentices in our life. You know apprentice? Huh? 
there are many great souls and we become apprentices and we learn from them that's the purpose of this place then we can be living people so we want to be living people or dead people living people living people means we carry uh, the sound vibration always with us and that is what that charm says uh, a person who is attracted to the spiritual sound vibration he is a living person a person who considers spiritual sound vibration a side thing and becomes focused on material advantages in a temple that's a dead person that's a difference so this is bhagwan thakur's instructions are very valuable uh, his teachings are very powerful for uh, all devotees so what is the purpose of the temple huh? so namrutwani in his from his instructions these are put together in one place and very easy to grasp it at least we understand what it is only we have to live up to that Hmm? If you really want to perfect our lives, Shila Bhagavan Sri Thakur ki, Nantra Shrimad Bhagavatam ki. I can take two, three minutes questions. Five minutes. Any mic? We have a mic. Yeah. Prajee, when we are talking about these dead people, surely some dead people will be there. So what to do? Should we try to awake them? I don't call them dead people. I call them unconscious people, because materialistic people are dead people. those who are totally materialistic and who, who are switched off to krishna completely they are dead people but those who are coming to our centers many times they may not be dead they are unconscious because they were at one time showing some life now they become unconscious they have woken up now <laughs> is it not true so how much time we should spend to wake them up <laughs> and that is how it becomes bad and some huh? so uh, we have to first of all set a good example ourselves huh? because you can attract others by our good example example is better than precept it is said correct no you become the change what you want to see in others, others. first we have to check are we sound enough uh, we may call others dead are we alive we have to check it that's the first thing and the second thing we can also uh, provide them training education and opportunity and facilities for them to ap- appreciate pure devotional service uh, like for example we are bringing many great souls here to come and uh, you know give their lectures so many maharajas have come here huh? similarly we have very attractive kirtan going on every morning our uh, vishwakirti prabhu goes huh? uh, and the same and our very beautiful festivals for the deities are celebrated here and uh, prasadam is cooked and provided many senior devotees like vedant chatur prabhu varadakrishna prabhu they are all giving lectures and uh, available here and my prabhu so the people are being provided with abundant opportunities uh, for becoming devotee we have to check whether besides setting example are we providing opportunities many times in many places i travel the shravanam kirtanam is not happening due to which others also don't become awakened uh, so we have to check am i a transmitter of sound vibration spiritual sound vibration am i doing it imagine if i just go to a center and do management uh, Hey, let us try this strategy, that strategy, all strategy without any samanam kirtana. Then what is use of all strategies? It's a big zero, string of zeros. Huh? Strategies are good, provided the main program is samanam and kirtana. Because Prabhupada said, management meeting should be for in, uh, increasing the preaching or increasing book distribution. Is it happening? Otherwise, the management is a big zero. Huh? Preaching related management, preaching expansion management. So. Uh, therefore the emphasis should be given even the preachers sometimes they become more of managers than preachers huh? organizing things get the gas cylinder get the grocery you know cook and you know feed the people and keep track of the database and reply the mails and then you find all things are happening except shravanam kirtana and then what happens the center cannot be a lively center so and why such management has increased if you see we have taken in too many people who are dead who are not alive so it's better to have less number of alive people and management becomes it actually that management also increases very few people are then everything comes on then only yesterday we no, no, actually class. few people uh, like in america and my travels now uh, what we are doing in dallas for example five boys are staying and another room two are staying one room three are staying so everybody cooks their own uh, cooking for three people cooking for five people doesn't take much management they do it on their own they take turns five boys are cooking on five days of the week saturday sunday they all cook together they do so where is management here there is little management for them 
and then they can do shravanam kirtan very nicely. Imagine having 30 people in one center. And many of them are lazy. They say, I will not roll chapati, I will not cook. Huh? And management increases. So, actually, maximize Krishna time, minimize Maya time. Huh? The uh, maximize Krishna time means it should be such, it should be made in such a way that, therefore, we have to be very intelligent to be always awake to see whether the purpose of our centers are being accomplished or not. Otherwise, we can close down the centers. It is useless, it is. Huh? Uh, one time we were discussing in a, one of the meetings, uh, we go to a particular place and start a center. At the time there was one good soul and the good soul has graduated already. After the good soul goes away, spirit also goes away. And the rest of the fellows, you know, they are running it like a mess. It's a joint mess. Hmm? Then the center has lost its life. Huh? Then it becomes a big burden something for us. So then I was telling that in any place you go, two, three, four years, uh, center is very flourishing. After that, many anti-elements problems come. So we should have a mobile center, we should have. <laughs> go to a place, as long as good souls are coming, run it. It's not there, wind up and go to another place. Isn't it? So the whole idea is, we we want to, in, therefore we have to be always, Simhavalokam, we say, no, watch, look back. Are we serving the purpose of See, I, I am in... Uh, I am in this uh, uh, ISKCON society since 1994. Many people ask me, so why are you so much emphasizing on these things? Uh, why I emphasize? Because once I asked a question to His Holiness Bhakti Charu Maharaj when he came to Bombay, he gave a lecture on leadership seminar. So I told him, Maharaj, we are going to open a big temple in Pune, hmm? NVCC. Hmm. So lot of departments are there, more than 80 departments are there. And uh, every year almost 1 million people come there. And 10 lakh people come there every year. So huge crowd is coming, going and um, I was asking Maharaj, I am worried that the material vibration will take over and the purpose for which the temple is made may not be accomplished. So uh, what would you suggest that we reduce the management time and uh, we would be able to actually, you know, keep the temple, every, keep, keep everybody spiritually enlivened, I asked. So Maharaj said, he gave an example. He said, in a chula, in a furnace, if you put firewood, big, big, thick firewood you put, it causes smoke, correct, no? But if you you blow and increase the fire, no? and the fire is engulfing the, you know, the firewood, it will consume everything, then there will be no more smoke. So he said, increase the fire of Sankirtan to such a degree that there will be no material component, he said. Material component will be completely finished. He said. So he said, whether small temple or big temple, the formula is same. He said. Huh? You have to increase the Sankirtan fire. How do you know? What is Sankirtan fire means? Interest in chanting of the Japa properly in the morning, uh, hearing of the Srimad Bhagavatam, going out on Harnam Sankirtan like Prabhu is doing, you know, distributing prasad, going out and preaching, taking book bag and going out, hmm? not uh, seeing temple as a facility for comfortably uh, eating and sleeping. And that means the Sankirtan fire is increasing. And many people who come also, they will start chanting, dancing and they will experience the joy of spiritual life when they come here. Right, no? Then as Maharaj was telling, you don't have to worry, Radha Shampu, he said, you know, you, you have many good devotees, he said, keep the Sankirtan fire on. So, after that we started 24 hours Kirtan on Ekadashi days. You know, 24 hours Kirtan goes on Ekadashi days. Now, may, many, many new uh, uh, components we have added. Like every day we have chanting, about 300 to 500 people chant one round every day in the temple. And then some of them, if they are agreeable to chant one round every day in the home, we give them free mala also. And we have started free prasad in the morning, free prasad in the afternoon also. So after we started this, morning 300 people, afternoon 300 people come. Yeah. So many, and also not that they just come and eat and go. Afternoon when they come, we make them chant one round. <laughs> Before, in the prasadam hall only. Sitting in front of the plate, you chant. Hare Krishna. <laughs> yeah. And then when they are eating prasad, we will read from Krishna book also. Hmm? And after the prasad, we will ask them, now you heard about Krishna, you chanted one round, you took prasad, would you like to chant one round every day? They say, yes, take the mala with you. Hmm. So in this way, we have to make the temple a facility for expanding the Sankirtan movement. Mm -hmm. then, uh, then it can be a living temple with living people. Prabhu, would like to say something, Prabhu? And my Prabhu, give the mic to him. Yeah, 
what was it? Okay. Hare Krishna Prabhuji, Dhanavad Pranam. Prabhuji, in, in association, sometimes happen that a senior devotee is there who is long term in Krishna consciousness. But when there's uh, like a new devotee comes and he takes the responsibility, that senior devotee shows less interest. Like, uh, like uh, means... Uh, you, you should give the senior devotee a higher service. We say give up to go up. Huh? You give up the smaller service, you take a bigger service. Like right now in Pune, for example, I've been a president uh, since 1997 now. Now I got added service now. Now I am a regional secretary assistant for five places like Aurangabad and, uh, you know, Ahmednagar, you know, Kolapur, Satara and Pune. I have to travel to those places. Now I got additional service in Hyderabad also now. Now one more service is uh, abroad also. I do three months ago to US also. So now although I'm not directly doing president service in Pune, I have many other services now. So it's not that a senior devotee uh, becomes senior and then he gives up the service. He has to have another service. Yeah, but at the same time, he has to be more enthusiastic or interested uh, to take the service. Yeah, yeah. But if he's not interested, then what? Ah, then we have to find out what is a spiritual sound vibration that is going into his system. Because uh, spiritual sound vibration is the cause of enthusiasm. Spiritual enthusiasm comes from spiritual sound vibration. Uh, if one is uh, hearing, he has to be inspired by some Vaishnava devotee. Uh, I tell the people, find out in this entire world of 8 billion population, don't you have one Vaishnava who is inspiring you? Do you think you are the only Vaishnava? You have to ask the fellow. If he is inspired, then you tell him, hear the lecture, get inspired, become enthusiastic and serve. Correct now? Thank you so much. So, Vedanpa would like to say something else. Give the mic to him. Thank you, Prabhu, for reading uh, Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur's, you know, Purpose of the Temple. That is very inspiring. As Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur said that uh, he is very clear and very uh, bold in presenting. The purpose of the temple is only for pure devotees, not for dead people, not for, huh. not to even take donations from unscrupulous people and all that. But actually, if we keep this ideal, these ideals in our temples, I think, you know, we'll only float pure devotional service and we'll not run after, you know, followers, we'll not run after people who are, uh, you know, trying to give some donation and try to control the temple and all these activities would not happen. Correct. Unfortunately, even, you know, as <clears throat> Kaliuga progressing, even that, that spirit is also sometimes we see missing in our temples. Um, that we may be wanting to see that more people come to the temple in that we, you know, we, we ignore the core activities. Because when we actually have more people, just like a picnic spot, sometimes people come. Yeah. Some people, sometimes most of the people who come to the temple, they, they are just interested in selfies and all that. Um, but if we don't have an educational program to actually, um, you know, bring, awaken their Krishna consciousness, although that temple may be, you know, floating with so many people, it's still a dead temple only. So fortunately, Srila Prabhupada has given us this, uh, you know, spirit of preaching, which Bhakti Siddhanta said, only a life, person of life will preach. Otherwise, he is a dead person. So I see that, you know, that spirit is kept in our temple here. And all our programs are geared up for that kind of, a, uh, you know, purpose. So I feel very happy that this temple is Prabhupada's temple. And Prabhupada's temple is following Bhakti Siddhanta's standard of uh, increasing the spirit. So I am very grateful to you for being part of that very happy to, you know, read, I mean, I mean, once again, you know, uh, look at the purpose for which these temples are established. Yeah. Thank you. Hare Krishna. Thank you. Uh -huh. Just like, you know, if I ask you, please can you get me a bisleri bottle? Imagine somebody comes and gives me an empty bottle. Hey, I didn't ask an empty bottle, I wanted. If I say get a bisleri bottle, I mean get water. So what is important, empty bottle or uh, water? Even if you give me water in a glass, I won't mind. Hmm?
But you can get a bistari bottle and put in a glass and give me, I won't mind. But what I want when I say bistari means water. Similarly, temple means Krishna consciousness. Without Krishna consciousness, the temple doesn't carry any weight. When Prabhupada, one last thing I'll say and conclude. You know, when Gandhi passed away, Gandhi, in Gandhi's name, one trust was started. And Gandhi's people told all over India that we have a big crores of rupees have come now in Gandhi's name. So we want to use that money effectively. So any of you Gandhians in India, give us an idea how that money can be well spent. Like that they asked. So many, many people gave ideas. Just like our Prime Minister takes Man Ki Baat, you know, people write, you know, different ideas. Like that, many people wrote ideas. Our Prabhupada also wrote idea. What Prabhupada said, he said Gandhi always carried Bhagavad Gita with him. In the political meetings also. In the beginning and the end, he would do Kirtan. Sometimes he would read a few pages. Some shlokas from second chapter he would read. So Prabhupada said, because Gandhi loved Bhagavad Gita, I request that his money be used for distributing Bhagavad Gita in schools. That's the first thing Prabhupada said. So school children are getting education. Let them get education in Bhagavad Gita, he said. And the second thing Prabhupada said, Gandhi also opened one Radha Krishna temple in Naokali. Naokali is a place in Bangladesh. Why he opened Radha Krishna temple? Gandhi said that many temples are run by Brahmins in India and they don't allow the lower caste people to enter the temples because lower caste people sometimes drink wine and eat meat and all they don't allow them to come in and that was leading to lower caste people going more astray so Gandhi said I will open a temple for the Harijans so he opened temple there and he had a plan to open temples in many parts of India like that Gandhi had a plan so Prabhupada said but Gandhi passed away so his money can be used for opening Radha Krishna temples all across the country. That's the second idea he gave. And third idea Prabhupada said, uh, most of the uh, places in India, the temples are abundantly available. Huh? You can see Gali Gali Mein Mandir. In India you find. Evening you go anywhere, you can hear the Arati sounds. Many places ringing and people are singing some Arati song. People come and go. But Prabhupada said, still those temples are not spiritually active centers. He said, the reason is, you know, any spiritually active center should have five things, Prabhupada said. There should be Krishna Darshan, there should be Krishna Shiksha, there should be Krishna Bhakta Sangha, and Krishna Naam and Krishna Prasad. So Prabhupada said, you know, we are opening Iskwan temples, where we have Krishna Darshan, Radha Madhan Mohan Darshan, then we have Krishna Shiksha, we have a bookstall where you get books, Prabhupada books, Krishna Shiksha. Then Krishna Bhakta Sangha, there are devotees living in the temple, and who are uh, preaching the message. If you read a book and you get a doubt, you can meet the devotees and ask clarification. Krishna Bhakta Sangha. Then Krishna Naam, we distribute the holy name. Huh? But through distributing malas. And Krishna Prasadam. Hmm. But Prabhupada said, most Indian temples, they give one small quantity of prasad. Revdi or some Tilgul. Huh? Little bit they give. Little prasad. And then people do some arti. Sometimes nobody is there for arti. They just put a machine. Ting, tong, tong. Like that they put a machine. Huh? And people just come and go away. Hmm? So Prabhupada said, all of the temples should have five things like that. And Prabhupada said, if you are ready to make the temples, I will give you the software for running the temples. Hmm? All over the country you make such temples, he said. So, in this way, Prabhupada, uh, uh, from his part, he was always endeavoring to utilize all the possible opportunities to propagate the Sankirtan movement. Hmm? Wherever there was an opportunity. You can see his heart. So, uh, this year is uh, Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Saraswati Thakur's 150th year. There's a big celebration. Huh? Our Narendra Modiji, Prime Minister of India, also has spoken about Bhakti Siddhanta Thakur appreciating our Gaudi line. It's a very uh, great moment of joy for Iskand devotees also because Srila Prabhupada is the gift that Srila Bhakti Siddhanta Thakur gave us. Huh? Because of which Prabhupada became founder of Chara Viscon in that first uh, historical meeting that happened in Ultadanga Junction, isn't it? So we are gratefully remembering Srila Bhakti Sansarasi Thakur and his instructions, which our Srila Prabhupada very faithfully followed and established the GBC as per his Guru's order, due to which we all are flourishing in our devotion service. Srila Bhakti Sansarasi Thakur ki, Srila Prabhupada ki, Rantaraj Srimad Bhagavatam ki, Gaur Bhakta Vrinda ki, Kali Upavana Harinam Sankirtan ki.
Berat bertangga kaki? Nah.